es un despacho de abogados que encabeza Jeffrey Lickman, que es un abogado muy reconocido en este país. Está considerado como, le llaman el, uh, el genio criminal, porque es un abogado criminalista. donde hay un juicio en su contra. Y entonces, vamos a entrar aquí. Ya estamos instalados. Y todo está pesadísimo, les he hecho. Está blindada, porque este cuate... ¡Ay! El 2018 ya está en el financiero Bloomberg. María Scherer, Kiren Miret y Esteban Illades tienen los temas clave respecto a campañas, partidos y los presidenciables. Urna tras otra, martes 9.30 de la noche. Porque reconoces lo importante, el financiero Bloomberg. de lo más bajo y hasta lo más sublime. Y es que exhibir luces y sombras de cada personaje se vuelve algo fascinante. Esto es en F y por Adela. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. So you've been working, or are you already working with Joaquin Guzman or, or not really? Well, You're you know, not the I'm lawyer. I'm sort of in a, in a limbo state. Um, I've been doing some work learning about his case. I'm not allowed to have the discovery materials in the case because I haven't put an official notice of appearance in. But certainly I've, you know, discussed, um, you know, a variety of strategic um, issues with regard to the case. So I, I feel, based on the amount of mileage I feel I've had on this case visiting him, I certainly feel like as if I'm working. On the You've case. been with him for how many? How many? Since time? February, February. I've, been, I've been visiting him, usually once a week or so. Sometimes more. Oh, once more. a week. Yeah. Now he doesn't speak English. You don't speak Spanish. So well, I've only it? had five years of Spanish in school. I can say about nine words. Oh, you um, do. No, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. But uh, we, I bring uh, an interpreter with me, and it's gotten to the point that it's it's very easy to communicate with him. How do you find him? How is he right now? I mean, um, he's agitated. I mean, he's stressed, as you can imagine. He's been sitting basically in a in a cave in a black hole uh, since January, the end of January when he got here. He's had um, virtually no contact with his family. He doesn't get to talk to any other inmates, any other prisoners. Um, never. He, never. He doesn't, doesn't even go. see them. Okay. Doesn't see them. He uh, can speak to guards, except they don't speak Spanish. So the only contact he has with humans are with lawyers. And anybody who's ever had any experience with lawyers, I don't know that I would wish that on my worst enemy, that your only human contact is It's with a lawyers. Lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> and you are a lawyer, so you know Sad what you're say. talking I know about. It all too well. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's been, it's been tough for him um, in terms of uh, family. He's not allowed to communicate with his wife. Um, he saw his children, which has been reported Just once, right? for the first time, for an hour, a first time in, 
you know, we're on eight months now. I mean, it's, it's, it's been very, very difficult emotionally for him. Uh, he's been under conditions that I've never seen in 27 years. Is this of exceptional? Practice. Like what? It's for the example. most exceptional. I don't know that there's a, an inmate in the country that has a detention set up as he does. Not even terrorists? Not that any I've ever been exposed to or represented. Um, he can't write a letter. You know, any letter that he writes to his family it has to be. is reviewed by the prosecutors in this case. So you can imagine there's not going to be much detail in those letters. Well, but you, you have the background. I mean, he's escaped from prison twice, so you know the background a little bit. Maybe that's why, and maybe well, that, sure. that explains everything. Yeah, I'm sure that that's certainly uh, what they're using as a pretext to lock him up the way they are. But keep in mind that escaping from a prison in Mexico, with all respect, is not the same as escaping from a prison in New York City. How's a prison in New York City? What, it's what, it's, it's highly... Is? How is it? It's, it's, you know, this is not the kind of prison anyone's ever escaped from. Okay. No one's escaping from a prison like this. It's, he's 10 stories up um, in lower Manhattan. Every few feet there's a, a, a two-ton metal door that he would have to get through. It's, it's virtually impossible. I've sat with him well over 100 hours. I've never uh, had a contact visit with him. Never. I've never seen him but through glass. It's the only client that I've ever uh, dealt with that I have not been able to sit with and go through materials and have a discussion face-to-face -face like a human being. He's not even allowed that. So it's, it's been you tough. You have to do it every time through, the, through glass. the glass. Okay, how did you get in contact with him, or how did he got in well, contact uh, with you? Well, we were recommended by the federal defenders. I went to go see him. Um, some lawyers were recommended. Some lawyers just went in just to go see him, giving it a shot to try to get the case. Um, you know, my view is as is, is, uh, high profile as this case is, it doesn't mean that just because a case is high profile that as a defense lawyer it's something that I have to have. You know, you need to feel something for the client. You need to feel something for the case, at least for me, I find. Um, it's easier for me to defend someone that I like and that I can understand. That Look, I don't judge him the way perhaps the government does, I would hope not. I judge him the way he treats me. Mm -hmm. So forget whatever he's been accused of, forget his history. Because if I started judging people based on what they're charged with, I'd never get out of bed in the morning. I can only judge them as how they treat me, and he's been nothing short of a gentleman. He's been polite. Um, he's highly intelligent. He's charming. He's got a great sense of humor. What I'd also say, and this speaks volumes about the man, is that his family loves him. Uh, I've met with his wife. I've met with his sister. And they've sat in this very space where you are right now crying about him. And that's not the kind of thing that people do necessarily for every client that I have. But they do for him, and that does give some indication that perhaps there's another side to him than what's been you know, vastly reported by the media. So you immediately said, yes, you would be interested in defending him? Well, I, mean, I was interested in the case. I wouldn't have gone to see him if I wasn't interested. But it, it took it, a while why? for us. Because like it's very high profile, and it's like a challenge for you? Or? Why I would want the case? Yeah. Well, the reason why I'd want the case, I suppose, um, is because it's a, a humongous challenge. And look, any lawyer that doesn't want a case like this, who would ever want him as their lawyer? He should be doing something I mean, else, I guess. Doing, yeah. Digging ditches, perhaps. I mean, this is the ultimate challenge. You've got a, the media has already buried him. The prosecutors have already buried him. So society has already buried him. So I have to give him his constitutional rights and give him the fight that he deserves, that everybody charged with a crime deserves. It's easy to represent the guy that perhaps society uh, uh, is a celebrity that society loves and might be easier to get an acquittal. But that's not what we do for a living as defense lawyers. We have to represent the people that are perhaps even hated by society. And I don't know that, that he's even necessarily hated by society uh, in, all, in all corners. I mean, I certainly have not spoken in all to corners, a lot of people that, not, that not, respect him. Not at the hometown, but you know what we've been through in Mexico because of the drug dealing thing. You know what? I, I hear you, and I, and I certainly appreciate that. I, it's, this is not the first person accused of uh, narcotics crimes that I've represented. But I have to tell you that in Mexico, it's perhaps easy to blame it on the people that are alleged to be dealing drugs. Mexico is a highly corrupt nation. Uh, politicians, uh, this is not all because of Joaquin Guzman. I mean, this starts from the very top to the very bottom. There is uh, all sorts of uh, uh, wrongful activity uh, going on within the government. 
most of that has nothing to do with Joaquin Guzman. So it's easy to blame it on him, but it's just not true. Well, but um, I give you that one. But he's still it's very kind. Of yeah, <laughs> he's still a criminal. I mean, you know what? He's not a criminal in America, is he? Has he been convicted of anything here? Not here, no. no. So he he's, uh, gets his uh, presumption of innocence just like anybody else uh, charged with a crime. Look, if I had a dollar for every time a reporter said to me, well, you're before trial, your client is a criminal. Well, says who? I mean, what evidence have you seen that you can tell us right now on television that says that Joaquin Guzman is guilty of the crimes that he's charged with in Brooklyn, New York? What, he was moved, right? He from a, from a prison in Brooklyn to to New York to Manhattan. I think or no? he's been in Manhattan since the beginning. Oh, always in Lower Manhattan. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, what do you find charming about him, and how do you uh, how do you know he's smart and brilliant? Well, I know he's smart because uh, anybody with uh, a reasonable IQ can uh, figure out when you're talking to someone who's intelligent. Um, he's very curious about what's going on in the outside world. Many clients are he not curious. He asks you, like, what's yeah, ask going on? You know, of course, we'll talk about anything that's going on in the world. We talk about anything and everything. L give uh, me an example. He'll want to know what's going on in the country, what's going on in the world, uh, how the president is doing. I mean, he's concerned about, obviously, what's going on in the world. But, you know, how do I, why do I think he's charming again? If I just focused on the allegations and the indictment, you know, how could I speak to him? Again, this, these are government accusations. I'm not sure that everybody in America believes every single thing that's coming out of the government's mouth these days, right? So I give him the presumption of innocence. That's the very least he deserves from me. He deserves the presumption of innocence, and he deserves his constitutional rights for me to enforce them. He's charming. Look, he's, he's a, a funny guy. He uh, asks intelligent questions about the law. Um, not every client in the first meeting when you're talking to him will be talking about uh, rules of evidence. I mean, this is an intelligent man. Now, it's been tough for him because I've seen him slowly erode since I first started meeting with him in February. But what he was in February is not what he is at the end of August because the, the constant drumbeat... Is he uh, depressed uh, and... You know, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. I, but, look, I anybody... Mean... I'm depressed when I go in there and I get to leave every night and go home and sleep in my bed. I, I can't even imagine what the man is going through, frankly. I have no, I can't even imagine. I have been to prison probably once a week on average for the last 27 years. I've been in prisons all over the world. I have never seen a situation as grim and unfair as what he's going through right now. He always greets me with a smile, and when I leave, he says, you know, say hello to your children for me. That's the kind of guy he is. Not every client is like that. Many clients, as you can imagine, are mostly focused on themselves, and it's certainly understandable of course. when you consider what they're going through. You know, get me out of here, basically, is what they say. Um, Joaquin Guzman, you know, spends time uh, to ask, you know, how am I doing? The how family, are my yeah. And, and this, the, he's not doing it for television. He's not doing it for the media. He's not doing it for anybody that will see it but me. And You think that's the way he is? I, mean. I, I think that, look, he, again, it's, I can't say that I know anything firsthand about what he's accused of, and I know that he's been accused of some horrific crimes. I get it. Most of my clients have been accused of horrific crimes, which is why they need me as a criminal defense lawyer. And that's lawyer. your job. It's, yeah, that's my I job. Understand. I view him, how does he interact with me? And he's been nothing short of decent and kind, patient, um, and uh, charming. I know that's Have you always said no to, to a client that you just don't like? Not to represent them? Yeah. Many, many times. Once, uh, sometimes once a day. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's many clients I'll say no to, sure. Because you don't like them? I just them? don't want the case. I don't want the case. I don't like the client. I don't feel that there's a, a connection. Look, it's, it's easy to represent anyone and everyone. Just bring them in, spit them out, uh, have an assembly line of clients. Charge them as much money as you can, uh, do as much work as you can. I, I don't want to do that. That's not what I went into this for. I want to have some feeling about the cases I'm working on. And if I can, I like to have some feeling for the client. Now, I've represented people that I've absolutely been disgusted with, you know, based and on your job things again. that they've done and things that um, maybe the way they've even treated me. Absolutely had complete disgust for them. It doesn't change how I work on the case. I want to win the same. I want to win for them, and I want to win for me. That's really the truth. Let's be honest here. Um, it makes it easier, though. I'm not saying that I have to have a client that I like in order to represent, 
but it certainly helps. And when you're working 16, 17 hour you days, better. you know what? It helps a little bit to know that I've got a guy that's appreciating it. So you, you've been talking to whom? I mean, Joaquin and then to the family and the lawyers in Mexico? Or how, how's the deal here? Because oh, you're no. not yet the, the lawyer. No, I mean, mainly I'm just dealing with him. Only with that. him? Not okay. only. I mean, I've dealt with some other people uh, around him, but mainly it's him. Okay. Because that's really, you know, that's really the relationship that's, that matters. That, that's what you need yeah. to work. Now, um, what do you need to define what's going, go, going to happen? I mean, why are you in the limbo? Because of the money, the payment? The well, the government has stated from the beginning that he has too much wealth to be entitled to taxpayer-funded federal defenders. And I can certainly understand that position. It makes sense. Then let him hire his own lawyer. Um, he settled on me and, and, a, and a few of my uh, uh, friends now, and we went to the government and said, look, we'd like to come into the case. And they were like, you know, slow down a second. We want to make sure that there's no issue with regard to the funds. We can't promise that the funds won't be seized. Mm -hmm. So this is not a, a two-week minor assault case. This is a major, major federal case that's going to last months. The jury selection could last a month. In a case like this, who knows how long? What it's is going the jury? Live. You know, the, the the trial. The trial right now is set for April. April, 18th, right? Yeah. Okay. But and this is something that's going to take a year of my life, and it's something that I'm going to be working on nonstop. So and you should be expensive. Well, and, and you know, frankly, I'm I'm not uh, the cheapest lawyer, and I you know that's usually a function of success that I've had for 27 years. I didn't start doing this uh, last night, and I want to be sure that you know you can see I've got employees, I've got rent. I'm in uh, Midtown Manhattan. It's expensive here. I'd like to be able to pay everyone and make sure that this is not going to be something that's going to destroy me financially. I think, look, you know, I hear from people criticism. Well, if you cared about the case, you'd do it for free. Well, you know what I would say to no, them? It's expensive. You know, to, to, to. you do your job for free for a year and see how your life looks after a year. And, and by the way, you're going to be working seven days a week, 16, 17 hours a day. Do all that for free. And oh, by the way, if they take the fee, you may have to put out a few hundred thousand dollars as well out of your pocket for expenses. Find me a single person that opens up a mouth that would do that. Guess what? There's not a single person. Every big mouth on the sidelines that says, why are they concerned about the money? You work for free. Have they been do saying that? You know, I get that, but I mean, look, you know, there's. Is there any bonus, uh, something? No, it doesn't work if that you, way. No, no, it doesn't work that way in, in America for criminal cases. You get paid a fee, and uh, you receive a fee. I've had cases where I've gotten acquittals. Um, there's no bonus. You get look. What we do is we get paid fairly, if we can, uh, for our work. And that's it. If we win, fantastic. If we lose, you know that we've done everything and in, in, in anything possible to win a case. To win the case. And, that, and that's how my clients are, is that people say, well, aren't you nervous representing dangerous people like this? Well, you know what? I'd be nervous if I was betraying them by not working hard enough on their case. It's never happened to me because we they treat know you've been working like on it. life and death. Because it's not just them that I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for me, too. I mean, I'm not just there to fight for them. I mean, I'm, I'm there for myself. I'm there for my children. I'm there to fight for all of us. We're all in this together. That's how I treat the cases, and that's how any good lawyer should treat the case. Well, but it's not a life issue for you. I mean, it's different. Which was your first case like uh, this high-profile cases? Do you well, remember? Well, I mean, this the is Gotti? The, the Gotti case. I mean, I've had plenty of cases that were in the media before Gotti, but there's cases that are in the media and then there are cases that are in the media, and Gotti was something that I would say that in New York was bigger than, than Guzman. Oh, really? Oh, much bigger. Oh. Much bigger in terms of the New York interest. Okay. International interest, I would say, Maybe not, yeah. Guzman okay. is bigger. Um, but in New York, I mean, this was something that was on the front page of the paper every single day. Uh, Guzman is not a front page story in America, perhaps maybe the day that he was extradited here. And I don't know what it's going to be uh, during the trial. Um, but it's not the same scrutiny locally um, that it was with Gotti. And, you know, back then... This was like uh, how long ago? It was 2004. Okay. Is when it started. I mean, I was a much younger man, as you can see. <laughs> much skinnier man as well. We were all. Um, you know, as we all were. <laughs> well, you're pretty skinny still. You're okay. Um, but it was something that I never... My, my children were born premature uh, two weeks after he was indicted. Wow. I had one year to get ready for the case. 
I had no employees. I had, didn't have a secretary. True story. By yourself? It was just by myself. I wow. rented some space in another lawyer's firm, and I was visiting my kids at the hospital three times a day. They were hospitalized for nine weeks, twins. And it was actually a great time for me because I just focused on that, and I, my children, and I focused on the case. And I had great tunnel vision. I worked seven days a week, never complained, and I loved it. And it never, it never seemed like work for me. It was, uh, it was like climbing a mountain. It's you know, your passion. It I was mean. passion as I just uh, climbed Masada in Israel. I can see it was sort of like the challenge that. again. You exactly. know exactly. Yeah. It was something that I just needed to get to the top to. And I never felt that we would lose. And we thought of a great defense. It worked out perfectly. And uh, the, the jury was ready to convict him. It was almost impossible to get a fair jury, an impartial jury. As we were getting ready for opening statements, one of the jurors started to cry. And I looked over, I saw number three uh, sobbing uncontrollably and said to the judge, number three is crying, judge, you may want to speak to her. The judge brings her over, asks her what the problem is, and she said, I'm afraid I'm going to get axed. I think she meant whacked. Mm -hmm. She obviously mm -hmm. wasn't watching enough mafia uh, programs on HBO. Um, <laughs> the judge got rid of her over the government's objections. We put, a, put a, an alternate in. 23 days later, John Gotti walked out of prison. Wow. So the point is this. How did you do that? You know, look, it's, it's just hard work. It, a lot of this is hard work, and you have to not only put the time in, but you've got to put the mental time to think up a strategy. Like you, a creativity or what? It's, I mean, it's I, like, it's like, it's like. Um, he was I mean, already condemned. I mean, in the public, no? He was in convicted. The, yeah. he, and he was just finishing up a jail sentence. So it wasn't like he was, you know, arrested out of the blue. He was in jail at the time he was indicted, convicted of another crime. But a lot of it was work. And then when you actually do the work, and if you're willing to put the time in, and not just do it lip service, because most lawyers will just give it lip service. They'll tell you they're going to fight real hard for you, and they're not concerned about the case. They're concerned about the money. They're concerned about getting their pusses on TV. It's not like that if you want to actually win a case. You have to feel the case. You have to feel every last bit of it. Read every single word of every like piece of evidence. Like in the movies? Like we see. No, like no, I don't see any, the any lawyer movies. <laughs> no? Never. never? Or any okay. TV shows. But I, when, you, when we watch you working until I don't know, after week, hours. And it is seven days a week. It is day. It until is Until you night. find the plan and you it's find the strategy. Every case is a puzzle that eventually you'll see. Well, the government says that uh, the client, your client is guilty. Well, who is the government that's saying it? Oh, look who's saying it. It's people that have lied every single day of their lives. Murderers, drug dealers, killers, lunatics. They're the witnesses. And when the jury sees that perhaps the government's evidence, their cooperating witnesses are worse than even the ones that are being charged, they start to have some doubt. And you can find the holes in the case. And if you do the work and you never give up, look, the one thing that's great about America, and I'll say this as someone uh, that grew up here and has been in New York now for almost 30 years, this country will give you anything if you work hard. Anything. Anybody who complains and says it's not fair, you know, this or that, I'm telling you, as someone who came from nothing, from nothing, if you work hard enough, you can have anything you want in America here. All it takes is it's hard work. It's the land of opportunity. It really is. And not everybody's willing to put in that time. For John Gotti, who is, it was a brother to me now, and I spoke to him the other day, I speak to him all the time. He's a brother to me now. He was a brother to me really? then and a brother to me now. I consider him part of my family. That's how much I love him and how much Even I though he was part of the mafia. You know what? You he, don't he, care he was about part values. Of the mafia. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I don't know what society well, it's would different. think is worse. It's different, no? You know, I don't know. He never hurt me. I'm asking. No, it's not different. No? It's not different, and I'm not. I'm not. A, what about the values and ethics? His, his family values are, are strong. This is somebody that that uh, was, as a young father that was going to every back to school night, every parent teacher meeting. Look, he what he did. By Even getting, though he next day he was killing somebody.
una manera no convencional de informar lo que sucede en la vida de nuestro país. Un programa de infoentretenimiento. Nación 321, jueves 9.30 de la noche. Retransmisión, domingo 8.30 de la noche. Porque reconoces lo importante, el financiero Bloomberg. What about the values and ethics? His, his family values are, are strong. This is somebody that, that uh, is, as a young father, uh, was going to every back-to-school night, every parent-teacher meeting. Look, he, what he did by Even getting, though he, next day he was killing somebody. He wasn't killing anyone. He's never been well, convicted. He's never even been charged with murder. See, that's something that you didn't know because you just assume based on the name. John Gotti Jr. has never been even charged with murder. Now, he was charged with a conspiracy to murder, got the charges dismissed, but he's never been convicted of anything like that. So he's different than what people assume. You, you presume because of the name. And it's the same thing with Chapo Guzman. Everybody assumes what I've seen on TV. I mean, there's, there's TV shows uh, going on about him. They're highly rated that people are watching. You have to believe that there is some artistic license being used to make him appear more dangerous and more awful than he could ever be because it's for ratings. And it's the same thing with the Gotti name. So I expect the same sort of backlash from the media. I expect it from the jury. I expect it from the judge. I don't care. You don't care no, whatever they it. did. I'll get through it. Okay. No, I no. don't care what they do because, you know what, if, if I did care, if it bothered me Once so much, again, you impacted, wouldn't take the I'm in the wrong area of law. Okay. It's not for everyone. So you don't care. Do you know to know the? Do you need to know the truth? I mean, do you need to know whatever Joaquin Guzman did or didn't do? It's it's not. Or no, it's, it's not, not like important. As a defense lawyer, as a defense lawyer, what I care about is here's the indictment, here's the evidence. What is our answer to these allegations? What is our answer to this evidence? If the truth is in there, that's Fine. fantastic. Um, if I, I'm just going to be deflecting the allegations and never really looking for the truth. That's fine too. It's not my job to find the truth. It's the government's job. I know. They need to prove the truth. I just need to disprove or at least deflect what they're saying. And that's how I look at it. I don't I can't get bogged down with, you know, tell me every last thing you've done, you know, from Sinaloa uh, to Brooklyn, New York and everything in between. I'm only here to deal with the allegations that are in front of me. You can't get too wrapped up in, in every last detail of the man's life I unless it's that. something that I've got to combat during a trial. Now, um, what are the chances? I mean, considering he confessed, I don't know if it's, a, I mean, legally confessed the, the, what, whatever he said to Sean Penn in this interview. I, you know, I have to tell you. Um, but he said, so I mean, your, I... your second question first, which is about this so-called confession. I don't consider it a confession. I don't know if the government's even planning on using whatever was said. Can you use it? I mean, is it legally I, you know, usable? I don't know that they can use it. Who's going to come in and testify that this is exactly what he was said, that there was no editing of what he said? I mean, look, you're, you're talking about Rolling Stone magazine and Sean Penn. You, you can't possibly think that that interview was done solely for a search for the truth. It was done to sell magazines. That's what it was for. It was done by an actor to sell a magazine. So who knows what came out that wasn't uh, doctored up? I mean, he's an artist, and he was pa painting a picture. Doesn't But mean there's a tape. necessarily true. I mean, it is on tape. Again, do we know that it's been unedited? Would you want your life to depend on a tape that somebody gave to Rolling Stone? I don't think you would. I don't no. think anybody would. So, so it, it doesn't affect the case. I, I don't think it does. I don't think it does at all. I mean, look, if, if the government's case is so weak. That they're going to be relying on, uh, you know, Sean Penn's taped interview that may or may not have been edited. You know, I, I like my chances. Okay, so it's the state versus Joaquin, no? The federal government. Okay, and which are the what? What is he accused of? I well, mean, he's which accused are, of yeah. various narcotics Here. related offenses in, in Brooklyn. I'm talking about just the Brooklyn, the East District of New York now. case. He's charged with violence. He's charged with narcotics. He's pretty much the whole kitchen sink, is how we would call it in, uh, in America. Everything. Everything. So, which are the chances? I, I know you, you're you called the genius, the, 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 what is it, the law, the genius lawyer? I, the, know, I have to tell you, whatever the media calls me, LinkedIn. Uh, you I'm, have I'm to, thrilled just that LinkedIn. they don't say anything bad about me. No, no, but, they call I, you the genius. And, I, and the, I tell you, with all respect to the media, and I 
I appreciate every positive thing that's ever said about me. I also know that the media can turn, as we all know. Um, I know in my heart what kind of lawyer I am, and people that don't know the work that we do and are not familiar with the law, their beliefs on what kind of lawyer I am, and I say this with all respect, you sort of take it with a grain of salt. I know in my heart what kind of man I am and what kind of lawyer I am. I, I would never count me out in any case. I don't care what the case is. I don't care what people think the odds are. I don't care. You wouldn't be in if you didn't uh, know. I, I, I wouldn't have taken the case if I thought. I didn't take it to lose it. Are they good chances? I mean, I don't know. I the seen best the scenario. Best scenario. Best scenario is that he, that he gets an acquittal and we go on to the next case. How many cases are there? I think there's six right now. So six. It's a lot of cases. Okay. But I mean, look, you First one, it, I think keep in mind that, you know, this is not the first client that I've had where I've been told, you've got no chance. I mean, I have had this exact case in New York before, where the night before the opening statement, I was getting emails, uh, you know, congratulations and good luck from people in my field. Not a single person thought, you know, I was going to win. Not a single person said, hope you win. The, the most I got was just cross-examine hard and you know, Condolences. You'll, you'll put yourself nicely is what I remember getting. In fact, I have one of the emails uh, framed at home um, from a, a mentor of mine who said, just, you know, go get him, Tiger. You know, not thinking I ever had a chance. I never thought for a second I was going to lose that case. Never. Not for a second did I think. Not for a second did I have even a shred of doubt. I was sure we were going to win from the beginning because I saw the evidence and I didn't think it was overwhelming. Everybody was telling me, the media told me it was overwhelming. Well, guess what? They didn't see the evidence. I did. I didn't think it was overwhelming. Their witnesses were garbage. I knew that they were garbage. And I, and I remember telling the government on day one of the trial, I can't wait to get to your first cooperator. I'm going to kill him. What about the evidence in this case, Joaquin? I haven't seen it yet. Not yet. I'm not allowed to see it. There's an order against What have the, you seen? Or just talked to him? Or just, what, what's just spoken the, to him. That's it. Just spoken to him, yeah, for the most part. And, uh, and then read the articles. When do you think this is going to be? I'm hoping it's going to be soon. I, mean, I think we're getting there. I mean, I'm hopeful that we'll um, be able to come into the case soon. I mean, we all want to represent them. Um, we all view this, and, and that's what I like the about The team? The whole team? The team. These are good men. One of them I worked with on Gotti and is probably my closest friend in the entire world I trust with my life is Mark Furnish. So uh, he was the first person I thought to bring on the team. Um, Eduardo uh, and Bill in D.C. are fantastic lawyers and, and, and care. You about just the invited case. them for no, the. Eduardo on his own was hired as well. We oh. came together, he brought in Bill, we came together, and this is somebody that I feel like I've known my whole life. Okay. And this is someone that I'm, I'm happy and, uh, and honored to be working to with. with. Okay. So this, is, this has to be solved soon. And yeah, this depends on, again, the state. They have to say, okay, the money. Well, we're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're trying to work through those issues. You know, my view is, look, you know, Joaquin Guzman is charged with very serious crimes that if he's convicted of almost anything in this case, in this first case, he dies in prison, in an American prison. That's it. There's no parole here. He dies in prison. If he's convicted of anything, he will die. This first trial. In just the first trial. So his conditions. It's either this. That's it. If he, he has to win this case. Okay. So add on top of that, he has no contact with his family or his loved ones. Um, he's not allowed to have face-to-face -face dealings with his lawyer without through the glass. Um, his, his prison conditions are, I believe, are pure torture. I don't think anybody who's actually seen it up there would suggest otherwise. So you put all that together, you figure, you know what, at the very least, can he have the lawyer of his choice? Can he have the lawyer of his choice? Is that asking so much? I don't think that's asking so much, is it? That he at least have the lawyer of his choice. We're not asking for anything more than that. And you'll find as the lawyer, the kind of guy I am, I don't ask for any favors. I don't ask for anything. I'm just there, just tell me when the trial date is, and I'll be there. You don't see what goes behind the scenes to get me ready, I'll be there and I'll be ready. Somehow or another, I had a lawyer ask me today, how will you be ready? And before I even answered, he said, oh, I, I know. I know if anyone's going to be ready, it's going to be you. And I'll be ready. I'm not, I'm not coming into this case to embarrass myself. It's not going to happen. I am here, and whatever anybody thinks, you have no chance that Joaquin Guzman has finished everything I've heard before in New York in another trial. And we proved those doubters wrong. And believe me, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't bet against me. 
Okay, now, um, it's all, the, everything about the money, right? I mean, the, what is he, where is he going to find the money to pay you? Yeah, if not, it, this is not something that I deal with. I don't get involved in No, I understand, the but the, it's, it's all, everything is about the money? I mean, like, if well, you get paid Well, I have to make sure that the government will allow us to, to keep it. I mean, that's, that's it. It's not, it's not, we're not He can dispose of his dollars. money? I mean, he can use his you, money? You Do have, you know you that? You have to or... talk to the prosecutors about that. Ah, okay. You, you don't know, know I don't know, know if the money is coming from him. I don't know if it's coming from friends. I don't know anything. These aren't the kind of things we discuss because, frankly, it's none of my business. It's not something that we would discuss. Uh, do I have any reason to believe that I'm getting paid with drug proceeds? Absolutely not. It's not like, you know, the clients don't say to you, look, this is what my criminal business is like. You know, this is how I do, it just doesn't work that way. We're just the lawyers. Well, you don't even ask I'm a tool. either, I mean. Well, you know, look, I, it's not like, it's, there's not willful avoidance here. I'm not you know, saying don't tell me because I don't want to know because that's not right either. It's not ethical. And one thing I would never do is do anything that would jeopardize my standing as a lawyer in New York. Look, there are going to be other cases after Joaquin Guzman. I treat every case like it's the last. I really do. Because you know what? We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, there is no promise for tomorrow. I don't know that I'm going to be here tomorrow. So every day is my last day, is the way I look at things. Every case is my last case. But I am not going to take 27 years of a good reputation to, yeah. to throw it out for anyone. And I never would. Just can't. Have you seen Joaquin after he was visited by, he, by his children, the twins? Yes. The, yeah? How, how was he afterwards? What did he say about well, that? Well, I don't want to talk too much about what he said. Uh, I can tell you that um, it was a big deal for him to see his children. And look, these are delightful kids. I mean, uh, you know, for them to be able to handle what they did the way they did, with the media chasing them into the prison, um, waiting outside for them, and, you know, when they're walking into the courthouse and walking out, I mean, these kids are six years old. They're six years old. And imagine what they have to go through every day. The but media did you expect society, different? No. Did I expect different? I don't know. I'd like to think that children are sort of kept out a little bit. You know, perhaps they're not, they don't have to have cameras uh, chasing them down the street. Yeah, I did expect more, frankly. But I know that there is an insatiable lust for all things Chapo Guzman. I get it. I understand it. Um, and I understand you have to do your job. I know your job isn't easy. You flew in from Mexico today to, to meet with me. I mean. I can't think of Well, you're worse. a very interesting character. Well, very kind I mean, <laughs> even <laughs> as, as, as interesting as Joaquin, I mean, in, in, your, in your thing, in your job. I mean, no? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and then you, you have this mood, and you, the, 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 I've been reading about you, and they say you have this, like, uh, this way of uh, answering and... and you're very aware of yourself and what you know how well, to do. I no? mean, you have to as a defense lawyer. I mean, you're, I'm the only vehicle for Joaquin Guzman to a jury. I'm the only voice that he has. Nobody else is speaking for him. And I have to treat it that way. I mean, there's a, a, an immense, tremendous responsibility that I've got the man's life in my hand. I had it for every client that I've had. You know, every case uh, that I've had that's gone to trial, or even ones that don't go to trial that you never even hear about is I have their lives in, in my hand. And when I'm at, at trial in front of a jury, how dare I not be prepared? How dare I not have emotion and, and care for this man? He's a human being. You know, we, have to, we have to care for him no matter what society thinks. We have to give him his rights. This is what America is about. It's what America was built on. We can't simply say, who cares about Joaquin Guzman? Let him go to hell. Well, guess what? One day it's Joaquin Guzman, it's a very slippery slope until it becomes me or you. So it's, we have to fight as hard as we can, and all I can do is give him the voice that he's been, he's been silenced right now, hasn't he? He's not only been silenced, um, you know, in front of a jury, unless he testifies on his own behalf, but he's not allowed to speak to the press. I can speak to the press, and that's, that's why uh, you're here, and that's why I'm here. I know. Here. Is that a human right? I mean, he, he should be allowed to speak to the press, or no? Well, or they're like... It's, it's something I've never dealt with before. Okay. Look, and I have to tell you, um, I don't think that this government is a, an all-encompassing bad government. I think their hearts are in the right place in a lot of things they do, most of the things they do. I don't consider the prosecutors in this case my enemy. Uh, one of the prosecutors I've known for 25 years, and. You're good friends. I, I would mean, trust her with anything. 
is much of a friend. I mean, I wouldn't say that any prosecutor is my friend, sadly. I don't really associate with them <laughs> outside the courthouse. But I like her, and I trust her. And I've had her on other cases, and she has always proven to be trustworthy and honest. She's tough. She's good. She's, she's tough. She's smart. She's fair. And that's all you want. That's all you want from a prosecutor. That's all you want from a judge. Understand this. The judges, for the most part, are former federal prosecutors. They're not exactly um, inclined to favor a defendant. But you want a judge that's just going to be fair down the line, if you can get it. And, you know, uh, Judge Kogan, I expect that from him. And I, what he did in court last time, he was fair. He was right down the middle. Uh, it's, it's all you can, can hope. Good judge, you mean? I think so. I mean, he did uh, what he thought was right. I don't think that there's any ill intent uh, from any of these people. But that being said, I think there's a, been an overreaction to Joaquin Guzman. As I said, whatever he did in a Mexican prison does not mean it can happen in New York with the different types of conditions that are in place here. Well, you never know. He's like Houdini. I mean, like I said, like... how many people have escaped from Mexican prisons? How many people have escaped from federal well, prisons? Well, not from that one. I mean, well, you know, it's a different situation. Mexico is a highly corrupt I'm just nation. curious. Have you talked to him about that? Los toros como negocio, espectáculo y cultura. Tiempo de toros. Con Rafael Cue, viernes, 9 de la noche. Retransmisión, sábado, 9 de la mañana. Porque reconoces lo importante, el financiero Bloomberg. Have you talked to him about that? I can't discuss what I've talked to him about, about uh, any of the stuff, but I can tell you that I've talked to him about everything. Okay, including that. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything specific, I mean, but it's like, I find I him to be interesting, and we've had a lot of time together. And when you've had a lot of time with the client, and you're not allowed to go through the discovery with him, well, guess what? There's a lot of downtime. Do you uh, laugh together? Oh, Does yeah. he laugh? Oh, he laughs. He... He's a, this is a, a, very, uh, a guy who's very quick to laugh. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, I mean, I consider myself someone with a good sense of humor as well. Sure. When we're together, we laugh uh, very hard a lot of the times. And we have, I would say, equally um, dark senses of humor, I would say. So we, we get along pretty well. Uh, somebody that I, I can tell you this, the time that I've spent with him has not been unenjoyable. Okay. Is he optimistic? Or Absolutely, he's optimistic. Really? Sure. 
Sure. And he wouldn't have hired you. He wouldn't be looking to hire me um, and, and pay me if he well, wasn't Well, it's a chance. I mean, you always have to look for a chance. But Not is every he really client optimistic? is optimistic. He, he's a very positive guy. And, you know, I don't know how many people that are going to see this interview actually know him, have actually spent time with him. He's a lot different than the way he is um, portrayed. Uh, portrayed in the media. He is a, a happy personality, very funny. He laughs, as I said, very easy. Loves his family, talks about his family, um, is interested in the world around him. Is highly intelligent, and I was told from the prosecutors, you know, this is not, you know, a guy that's a very learned guy. It's just not true. It's just not true. He is a highly intelligent guy, and 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 you want to do the best for him, but I would for any client. But in a situation like this, when he's been buried as deep as he has, you know, you just want to win more. You really do. I know he's been through a lot, but also, again, what we know about him is that he's done a lot also to, to the Mexican society, you know? And there's like this feeling, you know, that... Uh... You know, they're, they're, what happens with clients is they may be accused of crimes in other places. There may be findings in other countries about what they perhaps have done. He has not been found guilty of anything in America. I've yet to see a single piece of evidence of anything wrong that he's done in America. And again, I say this with all respect uh, to Mexico, because it's a country I've visited a number of times and, and loved, but I, I, with all respect, I don't know that the Mexican criminal justice system is perhaps as rigorous as the American criminal justice system. I can't say that the Mexican criminal justice system, system is as uh, clean uh, as perhaps the American criminal justice system. You know, you're not having judges, federal judges in America indicted for corruption. Does it happen in Mexico? It doesn't happen in America. It doesn't happen. It doesn't America. happen? Absolutely not. A federal criminal judge in America, I don't know that I've ever can recall in 27 years across the country that a federal criminal judge has been indicted. In the last uh, 27 years, has it ever happened in Mexico? So when I hear about what he's been accused of, about findings that have been made in Mexico, I pay it no mind. Don't get me wrong, but I want to ask you this. How old are your children? They're 13. 13. So they are, I mean, old enough to understand some things. And do you ever talk about this to them? Do they ever ask? Well, they're old and enough what now. what do you answer? Yeah, they, they ask. That's, that's actually a, a pretty good, because... good personal question. You, know, <laughs> you cut right through my heart there, didn't you? Um, <laughs> Yeah, they ask, and it's not an easy thing to discuss with them because perhaps the nuance of uh, the American Constitution is perhaps lost on them a little bit. The importance of right to counsel, uh, the importance uh, of a trial by your peers, uh, the importance of all the constitutional rights um, against torture as well. They're just kids, and what do they know about you know, what's right or wrong? Um, I would say that they, they're surprised by the attention from the case because, as I said, they were babies. When I had Gotti, and any other case I've had is it's been high profile, it hasn't been quite um, as hot the, as this one has been. Um, but they're respectful and they're supportive, and uh, you know that's all you really want from the people around you is to be respectful and be supportive and be interested. Because you know what, if you're surrounded by people that are not interested in what you're doing for a living, that's a lonely existence, isn't it? My yeah, and that should be your, your wife's case also. But in the case of your children, you want to teach them, no? Well, I what mean, I teach you like them, to tell them fair point. What do you think it's about the difference between good and bad? Yeah, I teach I mean, them that every man deserves a defense. Okay. And no matter how much uh, he is loathed in society, that it is important to stick up for people to ensure that they get their constitutional rights. And I say to them, if my clients are found guilty, that's okay as long as we gave them their rights, as long as we fought as hard as we can. It's okay. I'm not happy about it, but it's something we can all live with. And they understand that. They understand about justice. Justice is most important. That's what's, what I'm trying to teach them. I, the I understand. Yeah, justice. that's what. That's not why right I'm... or wrong. My right or wrong to them is it's right if we give the clients their constitutional rights and fight for the underdogs. That's what's right. What wrong is, is giving up being lazy, not giving clients your best, that's wrong. In terms of what uh, a jury says, that's out of my hands. 
Is it a public trial? How, yes. How is it going to be? It'll be public. The, sure. It's always public it's trials in, public, in the state? And, yes, in America it's all yeah. open, open to the public. Okay. If you get there early, you can get right in. Ah, yeah. can we invite us? Sure. Now tell me something. No, no cameras. No cameras. No cameras. Probably, no. Okay, and this is going to be in April. It looks like it's going to be it's in April. Be yeah. April. And you work with another Mexican, no? From Nayarit. Yeah, he was the um, the state prosecutor in Nayarit. Oh, like, you mean another client? Yeah, another client. Uh, Edgar Vetia. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yes, how, he's a client how, as well. How's that case? Well, it's coming along. <laughs> it's coming along. I uh, just was with Edgar a couple of days ago. Um, Is he here in, in New York also? He's in Brooklyn. In the oh, Brooklyn. Say, okay. Person. Yeah. And what's the case there? And, um, and he's where? charged with uh, narcotics distribution um, and various things uh, into New York as well. Um, also, um, a Brooklyn federal case. Um, you know, a completely different type of case. And a completely different type of person. Person, yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, Edgar is—he's uh, a lawyer. Um, he's obviously he's uh, highly educated, um, very low key, uh, but it, but to me, a decent man. I've I've enjoyed getting to know him. I've enjoyed working for him, and I'm proud to represent him. He's been here in jail for how long? I think he's been here since March. Oh, March. Yeah. Okay. And it's, uh, are you optimistic about the case also? I mean, I know you're, you, you would Am never go Am I optimistic go about the case? Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful for, for Edgar. I absolutely am. Um, you know, the Mexican law enforcement is different than American law enforcement. You're dealing with a completely different animal. You're dealing with a society that is perhaps a lot more um, corrupt than what is in America. Um, and, and I have great empathy for the Mexican people because pretty much every Mexican that I have met you know, I've really liked. Uh, Thank maybe you. I've been lucky. Maybe I've been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but they've all been generous and kind and respectful. Um, and it pains me to see the corruption that goes on in the country and, and see, and people in America do not appreciate the violence uh, that's going on in, in Mexico. The corruption it is awful. It's terrible. It's it, is, awful. it is so terrible. It is, it is it's like a It's been an ordeal. I mean, it's, it's been it's such an ordeal for the people, and the people deserve so much better. The country deserves so much better. It's a beautiful place, and it's hard for me to see it happening. And look, I know people are saying, what the hell is this guy speaking about? He's representing two people that are accused of crimes that have led to some of these problems. Again, so many deaths. I mean, but it doesn't mean, innocent deaths. You know, it doesn't mean that I support crimes. I don't. I just support that they get their constitutional rights. It doesn't mean a that fair I'm, trial. A fair trial. It doesn't mean that I'm pleased with what's going on over there. I find it painful to hear about and see how tough it is for the Mexican people over there. I do. Um, let me ask you something else. Are you in contact with the Mexican uh, lawyers, Joaquin's Mexican lawyers? I don't try to talk about any of that, that kind of stuff. You would not talk yeah, about that? I don't talk about any of that. Okay. I'm trying to keep it really just on me and Guzman, me and Joaquin. Okay. And that happens to be my Spanish name as well. Joaquin? Joaquin, yes. Jeffrey? Yes. Well, okay. that's what was given to me in high school. <laughs> <Tocayos>. <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> that was, uh, and you told me before you've been in Mexico several times, but not in Mexico City. No. Okay. For the case, do you have to go to Mexico? I'm sure or I'll you be don't in need to go to Mexico. I'm okay. Sure. Are you afraid? I no. mean, have you ever been afraid? Do you use any kind of security? Um, I've used security. Uh, am I afraid? Well, I wouldn't say that I'm afraid of anything really that comes to this job. I'm vigilant. I'm careful, you know, I'm not careless. Am I afraid? If, if I'm afraid, he's got the wrong lawyer. I can't say that I'm afraid of any of this. I'm excited. You know, this is an opportunity. You know, every, every case is an opportunity. Every case is an opportunity to, you know, show what we're capable of doing and also to help out someone who, as I said, like, like Joaquin Guzman is just absolutely buried and left for dead um, by the press, by society. Uh, by the Mexican American governments, they're viewing this as an inquisition uh, to his ultimate life sentence. I don't feel that have way. Have you ever been threatened? I mean, they they have been very big I have to tell cases. You that, that I'm more afraid of the government mm -hmm. than I am by any client that I've ever had. Um, I've had the government um, investigate me in the middle of the Gotti case. They sent someone into the bathroom wearing a wire to try to entrap me into a crime. Didn't work. 
in the middle of a trial. Which bathroom? In the in the in the bathroom in the courthouse. In the courthouse. In the middle house? of the trial, came while I was at the urinal, came with a wire on and tried to entrap me in a crime. That's what this federal government has done. I've had clients that they've induced to try to cooperate against me. You know, this is what that's what I'm afraid of because the government is not the government is not necessarily run by um, experienced, mature people. The people that are involved making these decisions are sometimes very young, reckless, careless, dishonest prosecutors that want to make a name for themselves and taking they me want down to me, would be they amazing. They want to no right? matter how, no, yeah, matter, no what. matter what. So these are the people that I've got to deal with. So this is the kind of thing that I have to deal with. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of a prosecutor thinking they can take me out in order to make their name. That's what I'm worried about. The clients, the clients are easy. The clients are easy in comparison. Now, in benefit of the audience, what would happen in April if you win the case? What would happen? Well, I mean, I that, the government's got a few more shots. Okay, out. that doesn't mean Joaquin is going to be out or no. Joaquin is going to be. Okay, you have more cases to win. And if you, if if you don't win the case, that would be like a death sentence for it'll, Joaquin. It will be a death sentence, but it would be. Uh, uh, if you can depending appeal. on what the sentence is, we can appeal, but it would be life in prison uh, for the rest of his life. Okay. But I mean, keep in mind, I mean, you're aware of how many trials John Gotti had before the government gave up. Like, there was four. There was four. And, you know, they had four chances at him, and they didn't convict him once. So, I, I you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic. What makes you so good? I mean, just the hard work? No, I don't know. Come on. I'm not so good every day. I mean, every day is a different day. The hard work is a lot of it. You know, uh, look, it it's, helps a lot. It, it's, it, it's a large part of it. Luck is the residue of hard work. I mean, I can tell you that I've had some great days in court that I would chalk up to, you know, me being, you know, highly intelligent and also highly um, prepared. But I can tell you that there are many days you get lucky and there are many days that the luck just isn't on your side. But you've never regret to take a case, like, like a case you've taken? I've never... Regret. A case that you've taken. If I ever regretted, I've ha I've never regretted taking a case. I've had some cases that I've had some remorse that I feel like I could have done more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I you know it's it sounds silly and it's a little embarrassing to even talk about, but there was a case in 1994, I think I had, ended up with a guilty plea, um, a narcotics case in uh, White, actually it was in Long Island. And um, I have regrets about I could have worked harder on that case. I felt, I mean, the client's been out of jail for <laughs> probably 15 years now, um, but I still feel some regret. I feel like I could have worked harder. But you know, you don't want to have that. It keeps you up at night. I don't want I know, to live with that. I know, I know. Mean, what keeps you out at night? Only work? I, I don't sleep much, so I can tell you that it's How pretty much How many hours everything. a day? Four, maybe. That's it? Maybe. Um, and it's not because I'm working around the clock. I mean, you're thinking, I'm thinking a lot. There's a lot of my mind, and it's very hard to sleep. I don't take sleeping so pills. So you're very obsessive, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I'm obsessed. I don't have a choice. I mean, I'm expected to be prepared the next day for court, or the next week, or the next month. And it takes hours. You know, I go away. Uh, I don't get to just you know leave this all behind. It follows me wherever I go. So um, there's a lot of my mind. I mean, I'm not up working every night, you know, till four o'clock in the morning, you know, gripping the sheets some nights, thinking. Uh, there's a lot, I don't sleep very much. I, I probably should take sleeping pills, I don't. I don't take any. Do you exercise any, maybe? The, I should that, probably that exercise help. more. <laughs> it would, it would certainly help me perhaps <laughs> sleep at night. What does your wife do? I mean. I don't want to talk about anything else really with the family. It's not in a case like this. Okay, but she doesn't work with you or, I mean, she's, okay, okay, okay. The kids are, the kids, don't, the kids are gonna see me in trial for the first time in this case. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Are they coming up? Are they they'll going to the... Oh, yeah, wow. wow. I, I want them there. Yeah. I want them to see... Uh, what you do. I mean, it's yeah. time, look, it's time that they see what I do for a living. All they've had to hear me blab about it for all these years, and, you know, I don't know how interested they are yet. I can tell you this, they'll sure be interested when they come in to that courtroom, oh, because they have no idea what they're going to see. Of course. I mean, it's, it's, it's a show. Probably. It'll be a show that'll be enjoyed by all. So if you allow me, we'll keep in touch, and I would uh, so much. Anytime you want to fly in from Mexico to see me, you're welcome. I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias a usted por su atención y compañía. Yo soy Adela Micha y hasta la próxima.